I clicked on every single tool in Adobe Illustrator, and here's what I learned. So obviously the first tool is the selection tool. Second tool is the direct selection tool. And clicking and holding also brings up the group selection tool. So with the group selection tool, I can click and drag and select multiple objects here. I don't really know what the difference is between using the selection tool and that group selection tool. I don't really see too much of a benefit there. Moving on, the magic wand tool. Double clicking actually brings up this menu that I've talked about before, and you can adjust the tolerance here. So if I turn my tolerance up, now you can see that this box is also selected, even though it's a slightly different value of the color blue. And you can use these check boxes here so that you can select ones of the same stroke color. Now these all have black, so if I click on it now, it's gonna select every shape that has that same black stroke. And the same thing goes for the stroke weight, the opacity of the shapes, and the blending mode of the shapes. Next we have this tool, which I believe is just the lasso selection. What the lasso does is it actually allows you to select groups of different shapes and things or whatever just by quickly circling them. You can just draw over them separately using this lasso selection tool. Now we're on to the pen tool. So here it brings up the options to use the add anchor point tool, delete anchor point tool, and the anchor point tool. Now I can actually just click anywhere on a path and add a point quickly. And I think it's pretty obvious that the delete anchor point tool is going to do the opposite. And the anchor point tool is actually just going to let you grab these points and make adjustments quickly. And if you hold shift while using the anchor point tool, you can actually move these points around. All right, the next tool is the curvature pen tool. You can just drop in points while you have this tool selected and it's going to approximate a path for perfect curves. So as you continue to add points and drop them around, you can see that the tool actually adjusts for the correct angle of a curve and makes a perfectly smooth line. All right, the type tool. So this one is very straightforward. Let's see what else is going on here. Click and hold area type tool. So the area text tool is great if you already have a shape made that you wanna put some text inside. You just click on one of the points and it'll actually fill into that shape, which is great for magazine layouts and uh, website mockups, etc. The type on a path tool is exactly what I use whenever I create like drawings that have text around them, whether it's a circle or an arch or just a wave like this, you get your path that you want, grab the type on path tool and click on it. And then you can see that it already added some dummy text in there. The vertical type tool allows you to create text that goes up and down. The vertical area type tool does the same thing as the type tool, except the text will be going up and down. And the vertical type on a path tool will do the same thing on a path going up and down. All right, here's one that I have not messed with, the touch type tool. I think maybe I need to have some text up here already. Okay, so it's letting me grab each character and actually possibly look for alternates here. It's kind of interesting. I've never used this tool before, but it might actually be super helpful when using some of these fonts that have a lot of alternates. Okay. All right, moving on to the line segment tool. This one allows you to just draw a straight line from point A to point B. All right, clicking and holding brings up options for the arc tool. If you click and hold, you can extend out an arc based on the two points that you're creating. Spiral tool, I have used this one. If you click and drag, it'll start to pull out this spiral shape. So before you let go, you can use your up and down arrows to create more spiral or use the option key to scale up and down and it'll affect the amount of spiral you have in there. If you use the command key to scroll before letting go, you can see that it expands the space between the lines in the spiral. The rectangle grid tool, and if you use your arrow keys, you can create columns and rows by clicking up, down, left, and right. And the last tool on here is the polar grid tool. This is another one of those tools where you can create more lines and things by using your up and down and left and right arrows. Okay, the next tool is the rectangle tool. So let's move on to the rounded rectangle tool. So here you have rounded corners 
while you're drawing your tool. Then there's the ellipse tool and the polygon tool. You can use the up and down arrows to add more line segments to your polygon. And of course, if you click with it, you can select the actual amount of sides that you want. Star tool, also very similar. There's a cool trick here. If you hold option, it creates a perfectly straight star. And if you use your up and down keys, you can create more points for your star shape. Also, if you hold the command tool while dragging, you can create um, sharper or more steep points or you know some more shallow points and adjust the overall shape of your star. The flare tool, I have seen this one before and I think it's very strange. It creates like a full on like gradient lens flare thing, but it's an interesting tool. I feel like probably one day I'll use it and be like, oh, I guess that was helpful after all. Hmm. All right, moving on to the paintbrush tool. If you click and hold on that one, you can actually get to the blob brush, which is what I like to use because it allows you to draw closer to how you draw in Photoshop, including having some pressure sensitivity on your brush. And this creates an actual outline path. The pencil tool allows you to draw paths, but you can also use the pencil tool to reshape these actual paths that you've already drawn. If you double click it, you can select option key toggles to smooth tool. And when you hold the option key, you can actually smooth out these paths that you already have. So the next tool on here is actually the smooth tool. So you can do that without having it as a shortcut and the path eraser tool. Okay, so you have to draw over the path, over these points, and it'll actually let you erase as you go. The join tool, that one is actually really helpful. If you have two paths that are close, you can select both of these points here that are not joined and use the join tool to draw across here and it will join those two points. Now the top one up here is the shaper tool and I'm really not a big fan of this, but what it does is it allows you to draw really rough shapes. Yeah, these are full on like shapes and paths or whatever. All right, moving on. The next tool is the eraser tool. You can actually physically erase out these spaces from here. The scissors tool allows you to select it and click on a point or anywhere on a path and actually break it apart. So now you can see these are cut into different segments. All right, next we have the knife tool. Draw over it with my knife and then I can pull those two pieces apart. Rotate tool and the reflect tool all right, next is the scale tool. A lot of people will resize things from the transform handles here. The scale tool actually allows you to scale it from the center mark. All right, the next one is the shear tool. It's really good if you have text that you want to make italics. All right, next is the reshape tool. And honestly, I have no idea what this does. I've tried it before. I've clicked on points. I've clicked on pads. I've clicked on shapes. I've clicked on a lot of things, but I honestly have not been able to find what this tool is used for or what it's supposed to be. So yeah, if you know what this does, leave a comment below and let me know because I've been super confused and also a little too lazy to look it up. Next is the stroke width tool. What this allows you to do is to select a point on a path that already exists that has a stroke on it, pull it out and create a wider width here or a thinner width here and just be able to create some variable widths in your line art. All right, clicking and holding here brings us to the warp tool and it's basically um, like the liquify tool in Photoshop. You can double click on it and you can adjust the um, shape of the brush, the intensity, the strength, all that stuff or whatever. So now all these following ones are pretty similar to that. The twirl tool will just create like a weird spiral when you click on things. The pucker tool will kind of squeeze your paths inward. The bloat tool will kind of inflate a shape. The scallop tool will create some scallop edges. The crystallize tool is going to blow out a lot of points. And the wrinkle tool is just going to add some distortion. All right, next up is the free transform tool. So you can actually create some distortion. Your object have a little bit more forced perspective. And each one of these tools is going to adjust differently. So the last one adjusted two points at a time. This one is adjusting one point at a time. And this one I believe is letting you free transform an actual um, side of your shape. So it's a whole segment of the path. Puppet warp tool 
This one allows you to create a mesh over an object and add some points where you can hold the object and you can pull the object. The next one is the Shape Builder tool and I've gone over this one in a previous tutorial. So with the Shape Builder tool selected, you can click and drag on segments and add them together or you can hold Option when you click and drag on them and it'll actually knock them out of the shape and erase parts that you don't want. All right, next is the Live Paint Bucket. So this allows you to actually come in and fill in color colors using a paint bucket similar to Photoshop. You can just grab different colors as you go as long as you don't deselect here and you can continue to come in, fill in all sorts of different colors based on your color palette and what you want. Next is the live paint selection tool. All right, next we have the perspective grid tool. This one is the bane of my existence. I turn it on accidentally all the time. So typically when I turn it on, there's not really any options here, but using the toolbar, you can see that if you click on it, there's a lot of points and things that come up. You can actually drag these things around and reshape the actual grid on this perspective and you can resize how the perspective of each side you know looks and meets with the other one and the beauty of it is that if you draw a shape into here it's actually going to already match the perspective of your grid and you can see that depending on which side of the grid you draw it on that's what shape of the perspective your shapes are going to take on all right, next up is the mesh tool. With an object selected, choose your mesh tool and you can actually click here and add points. While you have that point selected, add a different color. Let's draw in just a random shape and let's say this is an apple. So what I can do here is use my mesh tool to create a point here where I want my highlight to be. Okay, let's make it a lighter red color. And now you can see it's got a little bit of a highlight. Now I'm gonna take my mesh tool again and I'm actually going to add in another point down here and create this one as a much darker one. Continue to use this to create more points where you can create more gradient colors and create a really cool 3D looking drawing in Illustrator. All right, the next tool is the gradient tool. All right, the eyedropper tool. Clicking and holding on the eyedropper brings you the measure tool. All right, the next tool is the blend tool. So if we click on this and actually click on one point in one shape and click on another, you can see that it'll actually create the blend and put these two pieces together. Okay, so now we're at the point where things start to get really weird. This is the symbol sprayer tool. Now this is really interesting. What it does is it allows you to select a symbol from this panel up here and use your sprayer tool to actually just kind of paint in a bunch of instances of the symbol. And the more dense of an area that you create, the more they kind of like bubble up. And you can see that now it's placed a ton of these symbols in here. Use the symbol shifter and you can just pick one or two and move them around. Okay, so it's just kind of moving them together inside of this box. All right, okay, cool. Now we're learning stuff. Yay! So let's try the symbol scruncher tool. And this is moving these symbol instances closer together. Okay, symbol sizer tool. That's just making them bigger. So if I just tap, it kind of goes slightly bigger. If I tap and hold, it grows a lot. Let's symbol spinner tool. This one's probably straightforward. Okay, so you actually have to click and drag to spin it slightly. I wonder, yeah, that's super weird. Not very intuitive at all, so I'm not sure. I mean, this is like the weirdest use case I've ever seen. Symbol stainer tool. Okay, so it's changing the color and I believe I had this blue selected last, but it's changing, it's not just like changing in color, like it's actually changing the whole like, hue of that symbol. Symbol screener tool, and symbol styler tool. Please select a style from the graphic panels first. Let's say this little green thing here, and if I click on that, it's gonna create a green fill version from my graphic styles panel. This is some weird stuff. I've never worked with anything like this at all. I guess we're learning stuff, that's fine with me. Okay, the next tool is the Column Graph Tool. All right, the next one is the Artboard Tool. Click this button right here to add more artboards. All right, now we are on to the Slice Tool. And I don't really use this very much, but I do remember using things like this when creating websites using like Dreamweaver. And so the next one is the Slice Selection Tool. Next we have the Hand Tool. Rotate View Tool allows you to actually rotate while you're drawing. Next one is the Print Tiling Tool. This one is interesting because it doesn't really do anything unless you are about to 
some print settings. And the last tool here on the toolbar is the zoom tool. I'm gonna go ahead and do these last little pieces just to show you a few tips and tricks. This button right here is actually just going to reset to your default, which is the same thing as pressing the letter D on your keyboard. This little arrow thing right here will swap your colors and clicking on the filler stroke will select which one you are currently editing. These are quick buttons to reset to the solid fill color, a gradient, or no fill at all. So drawing mode is a really cool one that a lot of people don't know. And that allows you to choose whether you want to draw above your last layer, below your last layer, or inside your last layer. You can see the more I draw, the more they stack up. But if I change this option here to draw behind, you'll see that they start to go behind the other shapes. So now if you have an object selected, you actually open up the option to draw inside. This is set up so that I can start drawing here. I'm gonna use my blob brush and I'm just gonna draw in some lines and go way over outside of the artwork bounds and you can see it automatically draws inside of that box. All right, we finally made it. I'm really, really happy that I did that because I know a lot of times you don't really have the opportunity to just click through things and figure stuff out as you go. So hopefully you had some time to watch this and learn a little bit. So hopefully some of these tools help speed up your workflow. And if you wanna learn some shortcuts to help do that as well, watch this video right here. All right guys, we'll catch you on the next one.